This video is sponsored by Manta Sleep. They create these beautiful, soft, and breathable sleep masks that are customizable according to your own unique face shape via these little eye attachments. They also offer 100% blackout so that you can enjoy the most refreshing sleep or nap ever. Use the code SAMIDACOCO10 for 10% off your order. Enjoy the video. Hi Tina! Thank you so much for helping me out to study today. So we're going to be doing your upper body neurological testing as well as some special orthopedic tests. Um, so I'm just going to pull on some gloves. Okay, and we can start, we can start with doing your reflexes. So I'm just going to grab your arm here, just relax as much as you can. And we're going to do the triceps reflex. Good. And on this side, just relax. Good. And now we're going to do the biceps reflex. Just finding the biceps tendon here, and then just striking it. They're really good reflexes. brachioradialis, so I'm just going to turn your wrist to look slightly like this. Good. Okay. I'm going to have you close your eyes, and basically I'm just going to run through these dermatomes, and you let me know if you feel the same sensation or different on one side, to just to kind of describe what you feel. Um, so I'll start just randomly. I want you to put your hands out like this. Um, so we're in anatomical view, um, anatomical yeah, view, and we'll just start. Same. Okay. Same. So C8, so it'd just be like this. Okay, I think that's everything. C5 was out here, right? But it doesn't go to the fingers, so it's just out here. And C6 is like on the... Okay. All right, so that's dermatome testing. Um, next, we're gonna do mitomes. So we'll start with C1 and go all the way down to T1. So for C1, I want you to resist against my hand here and I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, good. And then we're going to do extension of the head, resist, one, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to do side flexion right here, resist against my hand, one, two, three, four, five. I'll do the other side, one, two, three, Four, five. So that's C3. Next we're going to do C4. So for this I'm going to, um, I'll do one side at a time. So push up into my hand. One, two, three, four, five. And then the other side, push up into my hand. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Now we're going to test shoulder abduction. So just bringing it up like this. Resist up into my hand. One, two, three, four, five. I wonder if I should be holding the elbow or should I be holding the shoulder? I kind of. You can just press on this like that. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. 
Okay, so we did C4, C5. C6, we're going to test the biceps. So I'm going to hold on to your elbow. I want you to resist again. So we're just doing elbow flexion. Two, three, four, five. Good. Side and resist. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to do the back here. So resist down. One, two, three, four, five. Good. And here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Next we're going to do C8, which is the thumb extension. So I want you to press up into my thumb. One, two, three, four, five. Other side. Press up into my thumb. One, two, three, four, five. And this one's kind of fun. Um, I want you to, and I can probably do both at the same time. I want you to um, kind of squeeze my fingers and don't allow me to pull my fingers out. So one, two, three, four, five. Very good. And now we're gonna do this. So um, I want you to squeeze your fingers um, out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, perfect. So that was T1. Okay, so that's it for myotomy testing. Now we're gonna move on to special orthopedic tests, starting with the cervical spine. Okay, Tina, now we're going to do the special orthopedic tests for the cervical spine. I'm gonna start with a cervical distraction test. So I'm just going to bring one hand here under your chin and then the other hand behind the occiput. I'm just going to pull up and that's just some traction and basically if you are feeling any pain on your neck or radiating, radiating down your arm and if this maneuver actually relieves some of that pain or some of that radiation then that means that you probably have um, a narrowing of your neural foramen or a facet joint problem or um, osteophytes, I think. So yeah, it just kind of decompresses the spine. So that's the cervical distraction test. Next, we're going to do the foraminal compression test, also known as the Sperling's test. So first, I'm just going to compress on your head just like this and see if that increases any pain or any um, tingling that radiates down the arm and if that doesn't cause any issues i'm going to side flex your head just like that and compress as well and i would do that on both the affected side and the unaffected side to see if there's any differences and if that doesn't cause any issues, I would put your head into extension like this. And then I would compress as well. Okay. Now, if I want to do a maximally foraminal compression test, so I'm going to be side flexing first and then rotating and then extending. And now we're compressing down to see if you have any pain radiating down your arm or any issues like that. Okay, next we're going to do the Valsalva test. So this one is to determine whether you have a space occupying lesion in your cervical canal. So this could be a cyst, a tumor, or um, a disc herniation. So I want you to take your the back of your hand and then I just want you to blow on it as hard as you can. Okay, thank you. And if that increases the pain um, that you're experiencing, then it could be a space occupying lesion. Now I'm going to do the shoulder depression test. So I'm just going to depress this side of your shoulder and then side flex like this. I think that's it. Yeah. And then I'm going to do it on the other side as well. Okay. So there can be two outcomes. You can either feel pain increase on the side that is being compressed or on the other side. I'm just reading the notes here. If the pain is on the compressed side, then this could be a compression of nerve roots or osteophytes. If the pain is on the stretched side, then this is more adhesions around the dural sleeves of the nerve. Okay, so the next four tests are evaluating um, thoracic outlet syndrome. The first one, I'm going to have you abduct both of your arms 
and then bring your hands up like this. I think that's right. <laughs> and then you just um, basically squeeze your fist and open it slowly. And you're gonna have to do this for three minutes. So keep it up there. I think that's right. Externally rotate behind. Oh, I have to kind of move it back a little bit more. Um, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> and theoretically, we'd do that for three minutes. Essentially, if you feel any pain or heaviness or um, weakness, numbness, or tingling, or if your arms fall down, that could potentially be that you have thoracic outlet syndrome. Okay, you can put it back down. Thank you. Okay, next we're going to do a costoclavicular test. I'm going to bring your hand back like this and I'm going to just measure your radial pulse and see if there's a diminishing um, or absent pulse. If that's the case, then you could have thoracic outlet syndrome. And I think in this case, it could be due to the compression of the subclavian artery. And that's why we would see an, an absent or diminished pulse. So we do that on both sides to evaluate each side. So I just bring back um, the shoulder like this and the arm and then just evaluate. Okay. The other one is kind of similar. I'm basically bringing your arm all the way up, 180 degrees, and evaluating your pulse up here. And again, seeing if there's diminishing or absent pulse. Um, next one is the cross arm test. So we are looking for any acromioclavicular um, pathology. So basically where the clavicle meets the acromion here. And for the cross arm test, I'm going to add up to your arm across your chest wall. Oh, thank you. Yes, you know it. <laughs> and then I have to push down. I'll push the elbow this way. Yeah. Push up. Uh, I thought it was... I push up. Oh, patient then pushes the elbow superiorly against... Ah, so I push down. Okay. So, and then, yeah. So, one, two, three, four, five. And if that causes any pain, then there could be a problem here. Let me try it on the other side. So again, you're going to cross your arm, add dot. And I'm going to push down, you push up. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's the cross arm test. Um, next, we are going to do the active compression test, which is also evaluating the acromioclavicular joint. I'm going to have you flex your arm to 90 degrees and then adduct 10 to 15 degrees with internal rotation. Now I'm going to have you resist my downward force again. Okay, so if this causes pain, we're going to turn your arm like this and do the same thing. And if you do have an acromioclavicular problem, then the second maneuver would actually relieve the pain, whereas the first one would cause pain. Okay, you do the same thing on the other side. So I'd flex 90 degrees and then internally rotate, add up slightly 10 to 15 degrees and then resist this downward motion. One, two, three, four, five. If that elicits pain, we turn it, supinate the arm. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Thank you. The next two tests are for the bicipital tendon. The first one is to see if there's any instability of this tendon. It's called the Jurgensen's test. I will be palpating um, your bicipital tendon, which is Right here, you can kind of move over it. And I'm gonna keep your elbow flexed at 90 degrees. And then what I'm gonna do is um, kind of pronate your arm. And then I want you to like resist my downward pressure while also turning the doorknob at the same time. Okay, and if that motion causes the bicipital tendon to pop out of the groove, then we have an insta instable bicipital tendon. Okay, try it again on this side. We're just going to look for that bicycle tendon. Um, 
Why am I having trouble? Oh, here it is. <laughs> I found it. Okay, so we're going to flex the elbow again and we're going to pronate. I'm going to have you resist and at the same time supinate. So tw twist that doorknob. Good. Okay, nope. Tendon is stable. This one is pretty straightforward. It's called a speeds test and this would confirm um, bicipital tendon pathology. I'm going to have you flex the shoulder like this and yeah, supinate, extend the elbow, and then you're just going to resist downward pressure. Okay, let's do it on the other side. Bring it up and resist. Okay, if I, I would ask you, like, where do you feel the pain? And if you feel the pain here in the bicipital groove, then it would be bicipital tendon pathology. All right, the next four tests are for rotator cuff impingement. And I think impingement just means like compression or rubbing um, pressure on the rotator cuff. Um, yeah, by the muscles or the ligaments. So I'm gonna have you abduct your arm, both of them. And then we're just gonna move it out like this. Good. And then, sorry, flexion and then abduction 45 degrees. And then full can, you're gonna keep your thumb up and you're going to resist downward pressure one two three four five okay now we're going to twist it this way so that your thumb is going down that's the empty can one two three four five okay so those two are both for rotator cuff impingement um, specifically the supraspinatus muscle um, we know that the rotator cuff has the sits muscle so the supra supraspinatus um, was this the greater tubercle of the humerus? That I think so. Like the supraspinatus goes um, first, and then infraspinatus, and then teres minor, and then subscapularis, right? So that's the rotator cuff. So like they all kind of go like, da, 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 da. yeah, they all kind of like go to the same place. So next we're doing the near impingement sign. I'm going to put pressure here on your shoulder and have your arm immediately rotated and then flex all the way up to 180 degrees. And if you feel pain, it's probably an impingement of the rotator cuff. Let's do the same thing on this side. Press down, immediately rotate the arm. Bring it all the way up 180 degrees. Okay. And finally, we have a pretty straightforward test called a painful arc test. I'm gonna have you bring your arms up like this, yeah, all the way up. And I'm just gonna see if you feel any pain during any of that, okay? Bring it back down. So essentially, between the angles of 80 to 100, if you feel pain there, that's a rotator cuff impingement. But if you feel pain past 100 degrees, then that would be a more acromioclavicular, right? I think that's more of an acromioclavicular pathology. And then if you start feeling pain as soon as you go up, that, that could be potentially frozen shoulder or a dislocated shoulder. Okay, so now we're evaluating the subscapularis, which is the muscle that is like on the underside of the um, scapulum in the back. So the first one's the Napoleon sign. So I'm gonna have you internally rotate and then bring your hand to your stomach. And if your elbow like drops backward essentially, like it kind of goes like this, then that's a subscapularis weakness or injury. Let's try on this side. And again, I'm gonna internally rotate and push against your stomach. Okay, you're able to do that, good. So for the Gerber sign, I'm going to bring your hand back here and I want you to try to lift off. Good. Other one. And then try to bring your hand back as well. Okay, very good. And if you can't do that, then that's also a subscapularis injury. I forget this one. Patient is sitting. Arm is abducted to 90 degrees. Elbow flexed to 90 degrees forms and force into external rotation. And then posterior apprehension is, um, is that removes the patient's arm this. into internal rotation, adduction, 
and then flexion. Flexion? Oh, this one, yeah, okay, so yeah. this is like, kind of like the cross arm test, but I'm doing this instead of, okay. Yeah. So, an interior apprehension is external rotation. Okay. Okay, so the next two tests were evaluating the glenohumeral joint um, and its stability. So, the first one's called anterior apprehension test. So, we're going to bring your arm up like this and bring it like that. And I'm kind of going to push back like this. So if you're apprehensive, like you're fearful and you're like, ah, oh, stop, then you probably have like instability of this glenohumeral joint. Let's bring it up and then back like this. <laughs> and then, so that was anterior apprehension test. Posterior apprehension test is when we adduct the arm and we internally rotate and then adduct the arm and then I push back like this. Okay, so that would be more like posterior. So earlier we were doing like anterior instability, now it's more posterior. And I think anterior is more common, right? Yeah. Yeah, because usually like it dislocates in the front. Okay. Let's try this again. So we're gonna internally rotate, bring it over to the side and then push on the elbow. Okay. Okay. Next sulcus sign. We're also evaluating the glenohumeral stability. I'm just grasping the elbow and pulling down. Any issues? Elbow. Pull down. So now we're doing the Mills test. I'm just grasping your elbow, making sure it's extended. And I'm going to pronate your hand and just flex it like this and see if it causes any pain in the lateral epicondylite. Adderall epicondyle. Try again here. Pronate and just going to flex. Okay, so that's Mills test. Mills test. How come it's still it's still evaluating lateral epicondyle, but it's we're extending instead of because you're using the muscle. Oh yeah. This one you're stretching against resistance. Yeah. I asked the same question yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> now you remember. I hope so. Okay. So we just did the Mills test, which is this one. Cosen's test is I'm gonna make a fist, radially deviate, and then you're going to extend your arm, basically like push up into my hand like this. Do it on the other side. Okay, I just want to review again. So Mills test is when we're pronating and flexing. Cosen's test is when we are put, making a fist, radially deviating the hand like this, and then pushing up into my hand. Okay, good. That's it for the epicondyle stuff. Now I'm going to check for your ulnar nerve stability. Just bringing your arm up like this, palpating the ulnar nerve, and then extending, flexing, extending, flexing, seeing if the ulnar nerve pops out of its groove, which it does not. Okay. All right. While we're here, we're going to check the tinnel sign. I'm just finding that groove again. Do you feel any sensations? Okay. You okay? All right. Good. No issues with the ulnar nerve. Okay, Tina, now we're going to do the vertebral artery test. So I'm just going to have you scooch up a little closer to me so I can actually put your head into extension. Um, a little bit more. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to put your head into extension and then side flexion and then rotation. 
and we're going to count to 30. So, <laughs> that's okay, we can just do 10 for now, but theoretically we would count to 30 and I would see if there's any um, dizziness, any like slurred speech, any problems for forming words, any double vision, um, anything like that, and then also any nausea, um, nystagmus, so like basically your eyeballs moving really quickly, and then um, yeah, so anything like that, or numbness or tingling, so that's what we're evaluating for. Let's do it on the other side, um, so extension, rotation, oh, extension, side flexion, and then rotation. And then we're going to just have you count to 10 again. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, perfect. Yeah. You can scooch back down. And we'll do a few more tests. And so this is called the clunk test. We're basically seeing if there's any clunks or grinding of the shoulder, um, which can suggest that there's a labral tear. So I'm going to push down onto the anterior humerus, uh, the anterior and proximal humerus, and then hold on to the distal humerus like this, and I'm going to fully abduct, and basically like bring your hand up here, um, and then I have to externally rotate while pushing down, I have to just kind of push down on this side too. Yep, we don't hear any clunks or grinding, so we're good. Let's do it on the other side. Thank you. So again, just pushing down here. Bring your arm all the way up like this. And then I'm going to push laterally. Okay. We'll start with the ulnar nerve tension test. So I'm going to push down on your shoulder like this so that it doesn't elevate. And then I'm going to abduct, flex, um, and then wrist extension all the way up like this. Oh, actually more like the ear. And then I think that's it. Yeah? Okay, so that's the ulnar nerve. Now we're gonna do the medium nerve and the radial nerve um, tension test. So let's start with the median nerve. I'm going to put my thigh right here um, on your shoulder and just kind of push it down this way. And then I'm going to grasp your elbow here. We're going to extend it and laterally rotate the arm while also flexing the wrist. And then we're going to abduct your arm like this. Okay, that's it for the median nerve. And then for the radial nerve, we're going to do an internal rotation of the arm while flexing the, the wrist. And we're kind of just going to leave it like this. And that's it. All right, and that's the end of all of our tests. Thank you so much for being my model. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.